Let's take a look at a question that deals with limiting reactants. So question 7.136 reads, if 35.8 grams of methane and 75.5 grams of sulfur react, how many grams of hydrogen sulfide are produced? And luckily this um, chemical equation is balanced for us already, so there's no work to do in that, in that regard. So what it's saying is that we have 30, oops, we have 35.8 grams of methane and we have 75 and a half grams of sulfur. And it's saying how many, how many grams of uh, hydrogen sulfide are we going to produce? So the only way to solve this is to actually look at the number of moles of each one of these um, reactants and then determine how many grams of hydrogen sulfide you could produce in each case. Whichever one gives us the lowest amount of hydrogen sulfide that could be produced, that will be the limiting reactant. That's the one that's going to limit the amount of methane, or excuse me, hydrogen sulfide that we could produce. So let's take a look um, at methane. So we'll start with methane. So if we had 35.8 grams of methane, and what we're doing here is we're going to say, okay, well, for every 35.8 uh, grams of methane, we'll calculate the number of moles. So we know that in methane, there is 16.04 grams of methane in one mole of methane. One mole, mole of methane. So I just went to the periodic table and calculated the molar mass of methane. Then from our balanced equation, you can see that for every one mole, there's no coefficient here. So that means there's one mole of methane produces two, so two, let me erase that, two moles of H2S. And we could stop there to figure out the number of moles, but we want to know how many grams of H2S are produced. So I calculated the molar mass of H2S. So for every one mole of H2S, we have 34.1 grams of H2S. Again, I did that calculated the molar mass from the periodic table. So if I look at my dimensional analysis, you can see that grams of methane are going to cancel out. Moles of methane are going to cancel out. Moles of hydrogen sulfide cancel out, and I'll be left over with grams of hydrogen sulfide. So I, I did the math already, and it's 152 grams of H2S. So 152 grams. Okay. So what we actually did there in that um, in that uh, dimensional analysis is we said, okay, we have 35.8 grams of methane and we basically have all the sulfur in the universe at our disposal. So does, we're not limited by the amount of, of sulfur. So if I had 35.8 grams of methane and as much sulfur as I wanted, I would end up with 152 grams of hydrogen sulfide. But we don't have as much, uh, we don't have all the sulfur in the universe. What we actually have is 75.5 grams. So if I do the same exercise, if I say, okay, well, I have 75.5 grams of sulfur. I look at the atomic mass of sulfur. It's 32.07 grams of sulfur in one mole of sulfur. Then I go to my balanced equation and I see that for every four moles of sulfur, I form two moles of H2S. And I know that in every one mole of H2S, I've already done the math here, I've got 34.1 grams of H2S. When I do the math here, I end up with a number that is, I'll change my pen here, to 40.1 grams of hydrogen sulfide. So again, you can see the grams of sulfur are going to cancel out, moles of sulfur cancel out moles of H2S cancel it, and I'm left over with the unit I want, which is grams of hydrogen sulfide. So again, you can see that if I had 75 and a half grams of sulfur and basically all the methane that I ever wanted at my disposal, I would only end up with 40.1 grams. So that means if I react 35.8 grams of methane and 75.5 grams of sulfur, the maximum amount of H2S that I could produce would be 40.1 grams. So that means that sulfur is the limiting reactant. It's the one that's limiting how much product we can make. Methane is not limiting. If we had more sulfur, we could make more hydrogen sulfide. And we'll say 40.1 grams of H2S are produced. So it might seem like a lot of work, but that is the only way to determine what is the limiting reactant in one of these types of problems. So hopefully you find this helpful.